Hello, I'm Chef Hyken, and this is Be Amazing or Go Home, the show that's here to help your business be amazing. Now, my job is to go around the world and help people and companies be more successful. We help them build loyal relationships with their customers, employees, and more. And this show will teach you important business lessons, but also entertain and engage you like never before. The time is now to decide whether you and your business want to be amazing or go home. So here's what's on tap for this week's show. Staying competitive in today's business world. Now times have changed and this isn't your grandfather's business anymore. We'll have five things you must do to stay relevant in your industry. The art of unforgettable events. One man who has seen it all tells us how he's flourished in his 50 years of business. Steve Shankman with Contemporary Productions shares his story. Fighting back against cancer. This company is looking into changing the world on how the medical industry treats cancer patients. You won't want to miss this. So, are you ready to be amazing? Well, stay tuned for all of this and more coming up next on Be Amazing or Go Home. Hello everybody, I'm Chef Hyken and welcome to Be Amazing or Go Home, the show dedicated to providing you the best advice you can put into action to transform your business into something amazing. We begin with a question on the mind of all businesses. How do I stay competitive in 2018 and beyond? Now, regardless of your industry, everything has changed about the way we do business. And the worst thing to do is to remain stagnant. Now here are five things you must do to stay competitive and relevant in 2018 and beyond. Number one, embrace the changing expectations of your customer. Now the customer expects more than ever. They no longer compare you to just your competitors. They compare you to any company they like doing business with. Be prepared to keep up. Number two, personalize the experience. Make recommendations that are specific to each customer. Recognize your customers want and expect you to give them a personalized experience. Number three, react quickly, especially on social media. When a customer needs support, they don't want to wait two days to get a response. They want a resolution now. And if you don't already offer good self-service solutions that will get customers their answers immediately, at least respond to them in a reasonable amount of time. Number four, don't let technology pass you by. Invest in the right technology to deliver a better customer experience. High cost is no longer an excuse. Many software solutions have come so far down in cost that even the smallest businesses can afford them. Stay up to date with the solutions available to you that can help you drive a better customer experience. And number five, be more convenient than you've ever been before. So how easy are you to do business with? Now, it could be extended hours, more locations, or an easy to use website. The company that makes it easier and more convenient for the customer always wins. This is what it takes to make 2018 and beyond great for your business. Now go out there and take care of the customers like you never have before. One man who has adapted to the ever-changing business climate over the years is Steve Shankman. Contemporary Productions just celebrated 50 years in the event and entertainment industry and they're showing no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Now whether it's 1968 or 2018, Steve Shankman and Contemporary Productions have stuck to their brand and they've perfected their craft in creating the art of unforgettable events. And I'm now very pleased to be joined in the studio by Steve Shankman. Steve, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Shep. We have so much to talk about, and I think it's important. Like, how do you keep a brand alive for 50 years? So let's start at the very, very beginning. Now, I know at one point you sold drugs, and then you moved into the entertainment <laughs> business. So give yeah. us a quick little background story on that. That's true. I worked at Walgreens Pharmacy. I actually lost my job there because while I was filling prescriptions, I was taking orders for bands for parties because I'd already kind of started the company going. Got really busy and hired a guy selling shoes next door that at one time uh, was my schoolmate. We started first grade together, and that would have been my partner for three decades. That's Irv Zuckerman. And it was only one year later 
1969, when on my way to go to law school, uh, I ended up making a left turn into the Grateful Dead at the Fox Theater. This is where the story gets really interesting. Yes. And they're leaving New Orleans on their way to St. Louis. Well, not so quick, because no. they got busted They in got New busted. Orleans. <laughs> right. Okay. For what you used to do. Well, actually, they had been buying the drugs you were selling. No, well, they, but, but they, they were they got not busted the same for drugs. drugs. Right. They were mm -hmm. busted for drugs, wrote the song Truckin', made it to St. Louis, although their equipment came before they did, which made it very difficult for us because we had to set all this equipment up in, in the same way they would want it to perform. But in walks Jerry Garcia and the band, and they did a great concert at the, uh, at the Fox Theater. So that's cool. So it, it, they got bailed out of jail, and right. on the way they decided, hey, let's write a song about this whole experience called Truckin'. That's it. All right, and this really is where the roots take off. You got into the concert business. You booked U2 when they first came into the United States. So we got a chance to do U2 at a small venue in town. There they were in 1981. What was unique also about the date, not only the price they were paid, which was a whopping $750. $750 to see you two. Right. And I've been in your office and I've seen the contract hanging on the wall. It exists. Right. And you booked some amazing acts at unbelievably, I remember Billy Joel. I actually opened up for Harry Chapin. And I remember standing in the back during the opening act with Billy, with Harry, Harry saying, someday this guy is going to be a huge act. <laughs> and he was a huge act that night for $1,250. $1,250 for Billy Joel. And he just played last year in St. Louis Bush Stadium. And he even referenced that right. uh, he, oh, yeah, when he played was, the opera house. back then. Uh, just as you too referenced when they were at Bush Stadium also, uh, referenced the fact that they didn't have enough songs in their repertoire. They had to do the first song and the last song were the same song. <laughs> and I mean, it was great. It's and they great. had a copy of the contract, mm -hmm. you too. And also I gave a copy of Billy's contract to him. There had to be a lot of risk involved. There's a lot of people that own businesses, a lot of people that run big businesses that want to know how does Steve Shankman handle the risk? That's why we got smart. We were in the yep. venue business, so we owned real estate. Well, when you think about Riverport Amphitheater, which is now Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. Right, now that's a theater that you built, an outdoor theater. Right, but once you own it, it's all yours, ah. which means you're 21,000 seats, you're getting mo some of that money, not most of it, because the artists get most of it, but you have VIP boxes, you have sponsorship, you have name and title, you have parking, you have concessions, you have other ways to make money. You have an investment. I mean, we built Riverport Amphitheater in 91 for about 11 million, but we sold it you know, eight years later for 20 something million dollars. So, I like that, and along the way you did well. And we did very well. So we are very, very much involved in all areas and facets of the entertainment business. Diverse, but focused. The fact that the company had so many divisions and we did so many different things. We were in the concert business in St. Louis. Then we were, became the largest producers of comedy in America. But we started Louis Anderson's career. We started uh, Roseanne Barr's career. Like Tim Allen's back doing shows right. again. Yep. You, and we started his career. When you have those types of uh, properties, you know, with all due respect, I can now take those shows to all over America or the world. Jerry Seinfeld, we did a world tour. So the cool thing about having comedians under your purview is that you could do them anywhere and everywhere. All this cash flow is coming in months that there are no concerts. Right. So it really it completed our year as far as cash flow. So smart. Find out ways to diversify. Find out ways to go vertical. Uh, great lessons. Your best memory in 50 years. The greatest thing I think we did, at least in my heart, was when we got the chance to produce all the major events for the Pope's visit in 1999, uh, the Papal the Pope. visit, Pope Paul II, yeah. Wow. And it was really something to be able to be in his, in, just in his midst. It was spiritual. It was life-changing for me, actually. And I, I think we already talked about integration vertically, all types of, there's all kinds of different music and all kinds of different type of entertainment. You don't have to say, I'm a concert promoter just because I want to put people on stage. I farmed that company in 1968. Mm -hmm. I came up with the name. I like the name because brand, you talk about brand. Here's a name in 1968, 50 years ago, that still plays today. It's contemporary, contemporary productions. Yep. And so we've reinvented ourselves. We're more of an event production entertainment company. So big companies come to us like Worldwide Technology, and we will produce their sales conference uh, wherever it is in the United States, a leadership conference. Uh, Disney's one of our clients. We have a small office in L.A., and we do all the, a lot of the Disney music events. So we're using entertainment mm -hmm. as part of a carpet meeting or a carpet event. All right. Last question. I always ask the one thing question at the end of every interview. One thing you want to share, you want to emphasize something we've already talked about or give us something new, a little nugget to give us a little background on how you keep a brand alive for 50 years. Perseverance. If you give up, you can't succeed. 
Who said if you don't take the shot, you can't win? I mean, this is what it's all about in business. But also, fear. You can't fear the next day because the next day is going to come. You can't stop it. Don't ever quit. Whether it's music, whether it's business, whether it's an idea, follow your dream. Follow what you want to do. Don't sit back and have somebody else do it for you. Somebody said recently, life is too short to live somebody else's dream. Well, you've done an amazing job, and I think you're living the dream. You've got a beautiful wife. You've got kids. You've got a great business. It's hard to believe it's been 50 years. Because um, I, I don't, I, I mean, I, I, would, I didn't know you all of those 50 years, but I knew you most of those 50 years. Amazing story. Thank you, Steve, for being on the show, man. Sure. You're awesome. It's time now for this week's amazing app. And if you're a traveler, this app is a must have. TripIt instantly organizes all your travel plans in one place, so you can access them at any time from anywhere. Now, TripIt has a free version, but they also have a pro version of the app. Let's take a look at some of the features. Organize travel plans. TripIt Pro also organizes your plans like the free version, and it keeps everything in one place so you can access it anytime from anywhere on any device. Find alternate flights fast. TripIt Pro can also help you quickly find alternate flights and open seats when you need to rebook. Keep travel points in one place. Just enter your award program information, and TripIt Pro will update your points and miles all in one spot. Get real-time alerts, instant alerts even faster than the airlines for flight delays, cancellations, and gate changes in the TripIt Pro version. And snag the best seat, the seat that you want. TripIt knows your seat preferences and they'll notify you if a seat becomes available. And finally, get fare refunds. TripIt Pro tracks fare changes and lets you know the moment that you're eligible for a refund, and that's money in your pocket. This really is a travel app that keeps up with you and helps you stay one step ahead. TripIt is this week's amazing app. How does a business go from just thinking about a huge idea like fighting cancer and actually doing it? Well, Immunophotonics is developing a drug designed to pull back the curtain on cancer and train the body to see through the disguise. Lou Alaruzzo is the co-founder of Immunophotonics and joins me now. Welcome, Lou. Welcome, thank you, Shep. Well, hey, so much to talk about. First, give us a little background on immunophotonics. Absolutely. So typically when a patient is diagnosed with, with cancer, they go in and, and the doctor says you have cancer and they want to do surgical resection or remove the tumor from the patient. Now, many of the times, surgical resection isn't possible. And so what you do is you go in with a different technique or an ablation technique and destroy the tumor inside of the patient. So it's very similar to surgery. And what Immunophotonics is doing is we've developed a new drug that we can inject after a standard ablation procedure that's going to happen anyways that transforms that local or surgical style treatment into an immunotherapy for cancer. So this happens after the surgery? This happens after the ablation of a tumor, yes. And you're basically injecting something into the body that's somehow tricking the cancer the bad cancer to, uh, or tricking the immune system to fight off the bad cancer. Because in my understanding, some of these cancer cells sit in the body for years and the immune system believes, okay, these must be okay, they're, they're safe, but they're really not. That, that's correct. So after an ablation procedure, what happens is you typically destroy the tumor tissue inside of the patient. And that, that's similar to surgery, except you're removing it in surgery. Mm -hmm. In ablation, you just destroy it inside of the patient and you let your body's immune system wash it away. Now what we do with our drug is after that ablation procedure, we inject our drug and it binds to those tumor fragments and it introduces those tumor fragments to the immune system in a very specific way. And then the immune system says, aha, this is what cancer looks like. Right. And then it goes out and attacks the cancer where it, where it was ablated, but also potentially distant sites. So this is amazing to me. At some point in your life, you decided I wanna do this because I mean, what made you want to change the world? Because potentially that's what could happen. Well, I will say uh, when we first started this, I didn't know where it would take me, but I just saw this technology that was so interesting that had the potential to help people. And, and ultimately, I got together with my co-founders, just an incredible team 
uh, behind this technology, and I'm so blessed to know them. And we said, we want to move this to patients as quickly as possible and uh, try and have an impact on the world. And it's been a, a, a long journey, up and down, but it has been incredibly rewarding. And I would imagine there, at some point, you had to make the big ask. I mean, there's no doubt that something like this goes forward without a lot of money. How'd you go about doing that? Yes, developing a drug takes a tremendous amount of resources, both from personnel and as well as capital. And to get started, uh, you've got to raise a small amount of money first just to form the company and get the idea conceptualized as a, as a company and in the company. And we raised our first half million dollars from angel investors that enabled us to kind of get things started. And from there, you go out and you raise money from you know, family and friends, from yourself, your, 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 your team, as well as from additional investors, both angel as well as venture capital. So to date, we brought in a little over $7 million to develop this. And really, it sounds like a lot for a product like this, but it is a drop in the bucket. Oh, wow. So we've got work to do. And how long is this going to take? You know, if you look at two of the gold standards, standards in the immunotherapy market, you have what's called checkpoint inhibitors and oncolytic viruses. There's a couple of those approved. And from discovery to market for patients was 25 to 27 years. We're right on that track. I think in a, in a number of few years, uh, we'll be able to show in clinical trials in the United States and Europe that our drug potentially has the ability to have an effect on late stage cancer patients. And from there, it'll just be a few more years before we can move it to patients and, and try and make a real difference. Wow. We're almost out of time. And I always like to ask the one thing question. What's one thing you'd like to leave us with? Either uh, something you want to emphasize that we've talked about or something that we haven't talked about. What's the one thing? So what I, what I would say to, to all the entrepreneurs out there is it's, it's a tough road. It's a tough journey. Uh, but we do it because we want to have an impact. So just continue to be passionate, resilient, overcome the odds, and, and truly have your impact on the world and, and keep it up. And that's exactly what entrepreneurs do. Thanks, Lou, for being on the show. Thank you, Chef. Really appreciate it. Amazing people are proactive and stay one step ahead of the game. And that's how Capital Innovators was formed. Now, Capital Innovators provides startup companies with more than just money, but also the resources and connections they need to become amazing. And you'll be amazed to see how the founder of Capital Innovators took a moment of misery and turned it into a moment of magic. So let's take a look at Capital Innovators. Hi, I'm Judy Syndicuse with Capital Innovators, and we're here to help you make your business amazing. Capital Innovators is basically a manufacturer of success. We take very intelligent founders that are working on some amazing solutions, and then we run them through a 12-week program to really help take their business to the next level. Capital Innovators isn't your average, ordinary startup accelerator program. They go the extra mile to personalize the experience by using a one-of-a-kind mentorship program. Capital Innovators is a unique accelerator in that we use a very hands-on approach to accelerating your business. Our mentors get involved in your business on a daily basis and they basically form a C-suite level team for you in order to make the magic happen. All these teams have been vetted for their ideas. They have experience in their idea generation, but they may not have it in finance. They may not have it in operations or even in building out a full-scale technology solution. And we're here to help them do that. Judy Syndicus was an entrepreneur herself and took a very proactive approach to create Capital Innovators. She saw a problem and took personal responsibility to solve it. I started Capital Innovators when I was volunteering as a mentor in a nonprofit that was helping early stage companies. And while I was doing that, I noticed that there were a number of these companies that really seemed to have a lot going for them, a talented, passionate founder and a really great idea. But they weren't getting the funding or the mentorship that I felt they needed in order to make it to the next level. So I created Capital Innovators in order to solve that problem. And companies in the Capital Innovators Accelerator Program share that common purpose. Amazing people take personal responsibility. StatRoute is a sports tech company and we're simplifying complex stats for fantasy sports consumers. It's a space that's loaded with high quality consumers. We're very smart, yet there's no innovative solutions for consumers. And so it was just a lot of frustrations and, and asking like, why don't we have this? Why doesn't this exist? Like this is 
you know, unacceptable in many ways, and then it turned into like, why can't I do that? Why can't I build that? If anyone else can do it, I can do it. Capital Innovators puts companies in a position to become amazing, but also understands that it takes a village to raise a startup. One of the big value adds that we provide at Capital Innovators is this community and ecosystem that an entrepreneur can plug into. And just the opportunity to work with other entrepreneurs in the same situation as you are on a daily basis, that is tremendously valuable to help take your business to the next level. It's that community and that support infrastructure that really helps take a business from a startup to growing it to something extremely successful to become amazing in their given market. Capital Innovators is thinking outside the rule book to stay one step ahead of other accelerators in the industry. We're the first accelerator to combine both a university system and a corporation together in order to create uh, an accelerator specific to a particular industry, in this case the energy sector. We would like to take different verticals, different uh, organizations that also need innovation and apply our model uh, of how to grow in an entrepreneurial fashion in order to become more successful. Capital Innovators is committed to constant, never-ending improvement. Capital Innovators is just getting started. It's going to have global touch points around the world that can help entrepreneurs get to any point they want with the business. The bottom line is that Capital Innovators follows the habits of an amazing business, which ultimately creates confidence with everyone. If you are somebody sitting on an idea that you're very passionate about, you see a problem in the world that needs solving and you can solve it for them, you should quit whatever you're doing and figure out how to make that happen. And you should look for somebody like Capital Innovators in order to help you do it because they can help you skip all of the potholes that might get you into trouble. They will help you avoid them and help you be successful. They really are literally and figuratively invested in you and in your company. And the numbers don't lie. The people, the companies that come out of this program uh, they, uh, they bring in revenue that are still alive and they've raised money and so that combined with the transparency was a good fit for us. If you're an organization you really want to teach your corporate culture how to become more innovative, how to get these new ideas and take your business to the next level to remain competitive in the market, partnering with an accelerator program like Capital Innovators is really the way to go. Capital Innovators says companies that flourish and become amazing follow their proven three-step process, innovation, iteration, and implementation. Go to CapitalInnovators.com for more information. We have some people who are ready to be amazing. It's time to hear from you and time to ask Shep. Now remember to find me on Twitter. My handle is at Hyken and use the hashtag ask Shep to ask your questions or share your amazing stories. Let's get to it. Peggy Hubbard just recently opened a hardware store and she tweets, I'm just starting up and want to hit the ground running. How do I create a customer service culture within my business? Great question, Peggy. So one of the first things I tell my clients to do is start creating what I call their customer service vision, and I call it in, in the form of a mantra. And the mantra is basically one sentence, or even less than one sentence. For example, the Ritz-Carlton has created my favorite mantra, and actually they call it their credo, and it's nine words long, and it makes perfect sense for what their customer-focused vision is all about. It goes like this, we're ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Nine words, that's it, that's simple. When you come to work at the Ritz-Carlton and you're told this, you understand it. Everything they do is they train to it, and when the customer or the guest hears it, they say, you know what, I get it. So it's one sentence long or even less, and it's what you call the mantra, it's your customer service vision. All right, now we hear from Jim Manning, who owns a real estate agency and investment brokerage, and he's tweeted this. I've had a lot of employee turnover recently, agents and office staff. Am I hiring wrong? What can I do to hire the right people? So the best companies are obviously hiring the right people for the right position. So I want you to think about this. Let's take a lesson from the playbook of Nordstrom. They have a great question that they ask every applicant that sits down and is being considered for a job at Nordstrom, who's legendary for customer service. And here's the question. What is your definition of customer service? Now, there's hundreds of right answers, and there's also some very, very wrong answers, and you'll know the wrong answers as soon as you hear them. But that's what Nordstrom does. So just to start, weed out the process, are these people in tune with what great customer service is all about? And that's one technique that you can use to start to hire the right people.
All right, finally, this is from Liz Kratz, who owns a restaurant and a bakery, and this is what she tweets. Customers demand and expect perfection. How do I get my staff to understand that the customer is always right? Wow, the customer is always right. Now that is an expression that we hear over and over, and it's a great one until the customer's actually wrong. So I want you to consider teaching this. Instead of telling your people the customer is always right, tell them the customer is not always right because they aren't always right. But you need to let them be wrong with dignity and respect. It's the way you listen to their problem. It's the way you listen to what they're complaining about. It's the way you listen to the request and then respond to them in a way that makes them feel like, hey, you get them, you understand them. And if they're wrong, then maybe you can sway them to the right answer or perhaps you can give them some information and help educate them on what is right. So remember, the customer is not always right, but when they're wrong, you let them be wrong with dignity and respect. So do you want to be amazing? Find me on Twitter. Again, the handle is at Hiken. And don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep. Time now for this week's amazing quote. Now, I'm a firm believer that anyone can use an inspirational quote to create an amazing business. And for that matter, to live an amazing life. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. made a compelling point about the power of an amazing life when he said this. Even if it falls your lot to be a street sweeper, Go on out and sweep streets like Michelangelo painted pictures. Sweep streets like Handel and Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote poetry. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, here lived a great street sweeper who swept his job well. Dr. King gave that speech more than 50 years ago, but it still certainly applies today. It doesn't matter whether you're the CEO of your business or you've just been hired at the entry level. If you're inspired to follow the examples of amazing people, you're going to want to do your best. I take away three things from this quote. An amazing life is a life well lived, a life lived to the fullest by the individual blessed to live it. Number two, do your job well for its own sake, no matter your calling in life. This will deliver significant career advantages as well as a deep sense of personal fulfillment. And finally, amazement is not an act. It's a habit. Dr. King said it best. Do the job well for its own sake and to the benefit of all those our work affects on a day-to-day -day basis. And you'll begin to realize amazing people habitually focus on excellence. Well, thanks for watching this week's edition of Be Amazing or Go Home. Don't forget to use the hashtag AskShep if you want to ask me any questions or share any of your amazing stories. Thanks for tuning in. This is Shep Hyken reminding you to always be amazing.